as per the plan, we are looking at equality of thirds. And equality of thirds is very much related to equality of irrational numbers, which we looked at earlier. Um, there's a couple of proofs, or really only one proof I'd like to go through to get us there, and the proof is similar to the imaginary number one. First of all, I'm not going to do the pr entire proof because it's in the textbook, but how do we know root 2 is irrational? Because, believe it or not, for many, many years, humanity believed the word was no such thing as an irrational number. An irrational number is... Yeah, good question. What does irrational and rational actually mean? Yeah? Irrational is a number where it can't be displaced Good. So, irrational... Yeah? Oh, nice one. Cheers. Irrational is where you cannot write it in the form of P on Q, where P and... Thank you. Alright. So irrational means you cannot make it equal to P on Q where P and Q are members of, have you seen that notation before? Yeah. Kelly, are members of the integers. And integers we use a Z. So P and Q cannot be written as integers. Now it means that most numbers we've worked with so far, we've been able to write in the form of P on Q. Even if it's one of those strange looking numbers, say one divided by nine gets you 0 0.11111 going forever you can still write that in the form of 1 over 9. And almost every decimal number you've been working with, will, can you can write it as a fraction, even if the fraction is not particularly pretty. And the fraction can be written as an integer. Now, for a long time, people believed that you could write every single number in the form of P on Q. Even things like root 2. You don't have to copy this bit. And the most ardent believers of this, so the ones who believed it most wholeheartedly, almost religiously, were the Pythagoreans. Pythagoras, as you all know, came up with his theorem, but he also started essentially a cult or a mini-religion. And these guys were strange. Um, for example, they didn't eat peas because they believed that after humans died, their souls became stored inside peas and beans. <laughs> yes? Huh? <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> One of the other things they believed was that there was no such thing as an irrational number. So, when they drew a right angle triangle, as they did because they were Pythagoras quite often, Pythagoreans, and they decided this length is 1, this length is 1, they knew that this length here was around 1.42. They could measure it, they could do some maths, but they always thought that it could be written in the form of P on Q. We know that it's root 2, because 1 squared plus 1 squared equals root 2 squared. So in Pythagoras, that number pops up all the time. However, for centuries, well, for a long time anyway, they believed that that was rational, so it could be written in the form of P on Q. And the legend story goes that they were sailing down the river one day in a big boat, and one of the um, new guys at the club sat down with a slate and proved that this, using the proof that's in the textbook, is irrational. And the Pythagoreans were so angry they threw him overboard and killed him. Oh my God. A bit harsh, but however, his proof lived on. That's the story, and the proof is now in page 45 of your textbook. But needless to say that root 2 cannot be written in the form of P on Q, where P and Q are integers. And that's an interesting property we use for our next proof. So, welcome Corey. Why are you late? Yeah, pointing doesn't actually help. I'm sorry. Can I tell you a bit? Sure. <laughs> Alright, so here's the rule I'd like you to write down, and then underneath we'll go with the proof. A plus B root K is equal to, if a plus b root k is equal to c plus d root k, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then a equals c and b equals d.
and most of you will recognize that we looked at a very similar rule but instead of k we used i all right and I should add that this rule is for when root k is irrational. So of course root k can be rational, say root 9, root 81, etc. are all rational numbers, however the majority of k it returns an irrational. Now our proof is one of those proofs by contradiction. And does anyone remember the proof by contradiction for the irrational case? I mean, the imaginary case? Yeah. So basically, when we do a proof by contradiction, there's only two possible cases. In our case, it's equal or it's not. It's like a heads or a tails. And we assume one, we assume it's equal, and then show that can't work. All right? So if we assume it's equal and prove that can't work, therefore it must be... Sorry. If we assume it's not equal and show that can't work, therefore it must be the other. It must be equal. I'll explain. All right, so let's assume A does not equal C and B does not equal D. All right? Now, we take the first line of our proof, a plus b root k equals c plus d root k. And we do some rearranging. So we're going to bring the c over to the left, so it becomes a take c. And on the right, we're going to move both the root, the, the root k's there. So it'll become d root k minus b root k. Remove the common factor on the right. And now we can divide through by the common factor. Uh, divide through by that D take B. And the only reason we can divide do that division is as d take b does not equal 0. Because if d and b were equal, that would mean we're dividing by 0, which we can't do. However, in our first line, we assume they're not equal, so we can carry out that division. We assume they're not equal, so we can do this division. That makes sense? If they were equal, then we would, couldn't do this division and couldn't follow this line through. Now, does anyone see the problem with this line? If it's a takes c over b take uh, d take b equals root k, it's rational. Good. That there is a rational number. A, b, c, d are all whole numbers. Whatever that is is rational, which is an issue for us because we've said that root k is irrational. All right. So we've assumed that they are not equal, and if they're not equal, we can do this. And we've shown that they're not equal, their root k is rational. However, with our starting assumption, or starting off with root k was rational. So we've turned root k from rational to irrational by doing this. And we can't turn something from irrational to rational. So that means that this doesn't work. That can't be true. And if that isn't true, that means the other must be true. So b must equal d. Make some sense? Yeah? Don't worry. Unfortunately, proofs are outside the realm of what we can test. We can't ask you to prove something. Which is a pity. I wish we could. <laughs> These sort of proofs are cool. But the important thing to remember or for you guys to know is this line here. You need to know that. And then, of course, know how to use it. All right. So mindful of time, I'm going to go through a very quick example, and then I'll set you guys some work. All right. Let's go with, e.g., 
x plus 2y root 2 bracket 1 take root 2 equals 1. Now, with imaginary numbers, our game plan was to get everything involving the unknowns on the left, everything involving what we know on the right, and then equate real and imaginary. Here is very similar, we're going to get everything involving the unknowns on the left, so the x's and y's on the left, everything we know on the right, and then we're going to equate rational and irrational. Let me show you. So, expand the bracket. x minus x root 2 plus 2y root 2 minus 4y. Now, by all means, in your working, if you want to take an extra step, that's just fine. But essentially, we use 4 to expand that out. All right. Now, there are unknowns in almost anything, everything, but can we simplify any of them? Hmm? In a way, I'll reorder them so we can see them next to each other. We know that x take 4y... That's our rational part. Is that the cue to go soon? Yeah. Let me finish this. <laughs> Minus x root 2 plus 2y root 2 equals 1. Now take out a common factor of that root 2, so it becomes x take 4y plus root 2 lots of minus x plus 2y equals 1. Alright? Now remember, on the right hand side is 1 plus 0 lots of root 2. We can think about it that way. That means that the x plus 4y equals 1. x take 4y. Sorry. And that here, the minus x plus 2y equals 0. Okay. So we've taken the real and the, no, we've taken the rational and irrational parts. That's the rational, that's the rational, that's the irrational, that's the irrational, and equated them, and a simultaneous equation. And now you won't believe your things here, you need to take a pen, and we'll take our chairs. Oh, wait, wait, before I go, I need to set your homework. Sorry, we would have had this lesson to practice it, but we can't fall behind because of the study skills thing, so homework as per the plan is questions one to three odds. Page 46, questions one to three seconds.